Hi, in this video we're doing an update to our GTA 5 story mode investor guide where you'll learn how to make so much money the game literally won't be able to cope. Hi and welcome back, my name's Dan and I'm an old grumpy gamer. Grand Theft Auto is a truly massive game. Between GTA 5 and the constant updates from Rockstar for GTA Online, there's no shortage of new content and interesting things to do. Join me then as we go through a comprehensive guide to breaking the stock market in GTA 5 story mode and earning more than $6.4 billion between your three characters. Before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, we do how-to guides, news and giveaways. So consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay up to date. Oh, and for this guide, I'm going to assume you'll be following the natural progression of of the game for the most part. That means following the storyline for whichever character the game drops you in at the end of a mission. And I should note, this also supersedes our previous guide. So first things first, this guide applies if you're working your way through GTA 5 story modes main quest line and have not done the Lester assassination missions using Franklin. The Jane Iris one carried out by Michael doesn't actually count for this. If you've already used Franklin to complete all of Lester's assassination missions, you've missed the boat on game breaking money. But there's still a good chance you can make enough money to buy just about everything with this guide. And there's a link in the description below. So for this guide, I'm going to assume you've never used the in-game stock market before, and this is one of your first playthroughs. And I don't want to harp on, but for clarity, do not do the Lester assassination missions without your seed funding and investments in place. That means you do not visit the L on the map with Franklin when it becomes available. Can't stress it enough. Also, don't buy any of the businesses yet either, and steer away from vehicle mods, clothes, and tats too. If you already know what you're doing with the stock market, know how to quickly jump forward in time, and know the save scumming trick, you can jump ahead to the timestamp shown on screen, or use a shortcut in the description below. Rightio. The stock market in GTA 5 operates like the stock market in real life. Stocks go up and down based on in-world events, announcements, and general happenings. This can include a market reaction to a heist, the untimely death of a CEO, or news from rival companies. There's also some random fluctuations, but we're not going to worry about those. Instead, we'll be concentrating on the major market movers. Now, before we get to the actual stock tips, there's a few things we need to cover first, starting with the basic mechanics around buying and selling stock. The stock market is unlocked not long after Michael sorts out Jane Iris in Friend Request, where we meet Ricky. To purchase stock, open your phone. That's up on your D-pad for a controller or the up arrow on your keyboard. Next, head to the internet icon. Click the Money and Services tab. And let's get started with the Liberty City Exchange or the LCN. As you can see, there are a number of stocks available. The company name and the current price columns are pretty self-explanatory. It's the price movement and the average change that we'll be keeping an eye on. Movement here determines whether we make money or lose it on any given trade. Next up is the Bolsack Exchange. Click the grey tab at the top to access this. Now, if you see a list like this, you're good to go. If the exchange is not available or it's offline, this becomes a little more work. What we'll need to do to get the second exchange working is link your Rockstar Social Club account with your game. So if you have a PSN or an Xbox Live account, you should be able to do this by logging into rockstargames.com and selecting Link Account from the menu at the top right. Steam, Epic, and standard PC versions should be more or less the same, but there are links to the official Rockstar documentation below. Once you've done that, restart the game and you should be able to access the Bolsack Exchange. Now, after all that, if you're still not able to get onto the Bolsack Exchange, then you need to jump over to this video instead, which expressly deals with offline trades only. As always, links in the description below. Assuming you're good there, to purchase any stock, click on it. Click the green buy button, Click and hold the green plus button until you have all the stock you want, and normally that means we'll be purchasing as many as we can. Click the green buy button again, and once that's done, you'll see a readout of the purchase with the current price and your potential profit or loss. After that, you can exit the internet by clicking the X in the URL bar up the top. Selling is reasonably straightforward too. Bring up your phone, head to the internet icon, click the money and services tab again, click on either LCN or the ball sack, it doesn't matter, but this time we're clicking my portfolio. And if you're happy with the pricing, click sell all. So with that one out of the way, there's two other concepts we need to cover before we get started. Firstly, jumping forward. In this case, jumping forward is the practice of advancing game time without actually having to spend hours on the game itself. This is normally done by saving a game. Simply go to bed with any character, either save or back out without saving, and the game advances a few hours. Now, each character is a little different. Michael sleeps for six hours when he goes to bed, Franklin sleeps for eight, and Trevor for 12. So if we wanted to, say, advance one full day in the game, that's uh, 24 hours, we'd need to send 
send Trevor to bed twice, Franklin to bed three times, and Michael would need to go to bed four times. It's a bit of a pain in the backside, but it's a whole lot better than AFKing for the 48 minutes it would take to hit the same time in game. The next trick is called save scumming, and we use it to maximize returns. GTA Story Mode has some volatility and a whole lot of timing built into the market, and sometimes that means we can miss our optimal sell price. To avoid this, check the price of a stock before you send your character to bed. So in this case, and I'm using a random stock here just for the sake of the example, we can see the stock I'm looking at is an all-time high of 13.6% profit. So let's save that, then advance one day by going to save, then backing out three times, because we're using Franklin, who sleeps eight hours at a time. Now we check the stock again. This time it's gone down a little, so we'll keep at it. We'll advance another day and this time we have a new all-time high which is a yield around that 14.9% profit. So let's do a proper save. Jumping forward another day, we can see a slight dip here. I think the 14.9 was a better return and it's likely going to be the best we're going to get. So let's go back to that last save and sell at that 14.9% mark. Open your pause menu, go to game, load game and select the save slot you just used. Once the game loads, you can open the stock market and sell out. Most of the time, it will be pretty close to that all-time high you sold on. This is not quite the way the game is meant to work, but hey, we're actively manipulating the stock market here, and it's all about that return on investment. Rightio, one more thing to cover before delving into the funding part of this video, maximum cash capacity. Each character can only, and I say only, carry a maximum of 2,147,483,647 dollars. This is likely a system limitation put in place for the Xbox and the PS3 versions, as it's the largest 32-bit number that can exist. If the value of your shares exceed this, when you come to the last mission or two, you'll only be able to cash in some of your stock. If this is the case, you can spend up, then withdraw more later. So not to worry. Okay, the next thing we need to do is build some seed capital. After all, it takes money to make money. Most of our early game opportunities for raising capital are available after Hood Safari, which is the one where Trevor meets Aunt Denise and gives her $7. It's also the one where we visit CJ's old place for any San Andreas fans out there. You'll also need to have completed the Merryweather heist, where Trevor accidentally steals an experimental weapon. So let's start with Michael. Open your phone and search for Epsilon. Click on the Epsilon program website and start the survey. This will start the Epsilon Institute questline, which will lead Michael on quite a journey. Conveniently, we've made a set of guides on how to get through these missions. The links are in the description below. Once you've made it all the way through the questline to the final mission, Unknowing the Truth, steal the money from Arj gives you, netting you 2.1 million in seed money and properly starting our journey. Moving over to Franklin next. First up, we want to head to this part of the map to trigger the bike theft random event. Now, don't worry too much about the footage. We definitely want to do this with Franklin. Soon after returning the bike, Franklin will receive $100,000 in stock, which you should sell immediately. Next, head to the Sonar Collection stock on the western side of the map. With the money from the jewellery store job and the shares from the mountain bike, Franklin should have just enough money to purchase the dock. Once that's done, jump in the sub and collect 30 lots of nuclear waste to put an additional 690000 in the kitty, plus get a refund on your original purchase price. Right, over to Trevor next. Now, Trevor already has some money, so we're just giving him a bit of a top up, starting with the Sonar Collection stock that Franklin just purchased. Head to the dock, jump in the dinghy, and head to this point on the map. Now, I know the footage shows Franklin here, but we definitely want to do this one with Trevor. Once you're close, dive down and dig amongst the reeds in front of this aircraft hull. There's still an old marker for the secret money briefcases that were removed a while back. If you can find it, there's an additional $12,000 for your trouble. After that, head to this Strangers and Freaks marker to start the Vinewood Souvenirs side quests with Nigel and Mrs. Thornhill. These are a bit of fun too, and nowhere near as tedious as those submarine collections. When you get to the last mission of the quest line, the last act where you go to uh, dispose of Al Dinopoli, on the way to the drop off, Al will offer you a bribe. Wait until the second offer of $10,000 and then drop him off. Sticking with Trevor, you should have received a message from Maud by the time we get to this point. Head to the Freaks and Strangers marker here, and Maud will give you four bounties to collect. Bring each of them in alive for an additional $40,000 in total. Heading to the base of the Altruist Camp next, we'll find this odd scene, an approximation of a scene from No Country for Old Men, where we'll be able to finish off the remaining participants and collect an easy 25 grand. 
And the final round of Series A funding can be collected by completing the Altruist Challenge itself. This is where you drop off four poor souls to the Altruist camp, where it's strongly suspected these cannibals will make soup of them. I typically pick the most morally dubious characters to drop off, and as always, there is a complete guide available in the description below. And that's it for Trevor. It's worth noting that you shouldn't worry about any of the other businesses, most of them lose money, and the Mackenzie Airfield hangar will take around about four hours of grinding before you even break even, let alone and turn a profit. And that's it for early prep. With all this done, Michael should be sitting on a little under 3 million, with Franklin around the million mark and Trevor sitting on about 330 grand. Okay, time to get down to brass tax investments. Now the first and one of the most important things is if you are driving around this part of the map and see this guy asking for a ride, do not pick him up. Instead, head to the other side of the road and deliberately avoid triggering the start of that random encounter. He'll give us a stock tip that yields somewhere between 25 and 30% and we want to save that for a bit later on in the playthrough. Now it's time for our first investment, starting with better pharmaceuticals under the BET code. Now the great thing is, prices change from playthrough to playthrough. The percentages remain on par between games though. Start by doing a hard save of your game, that's where we send your character to bed and actually create a new save file as opposed to the regular autosave or just backing out, and next we'll confirm your game isn't bugged, which happens maddeningly often. Head to the stock exchange on your phone and find better, that's BET on the Ballsack exchange, and purchase one share. One share. Exit out, go to bed, and immediately back out. Then check your phone again. If the share is there, your game is fine. If not, your game is bugged, and you may need to refer to this guide, or check out the video in the description below to fix it. Assuming your game's stock market is fine, sink all of your money into better for all three characters. Once you're done, swap back to Franklin and head to the L on the map, which will trigger the first Lester assassination. Complete the mission, and then head back to the safe house. Either Franklin or Michael will do here. Using the sleep trick, advance time a couple of times. We want to jump ahead around 12 to 18 hours. Once that's done, you should see the price jump around 50%. Sell on all three characters. Jump forward another one and a half days, so Trevor's your best bet for this one, and in that time, the price of Bilkington, that's B-I-L, will tank. Buy the stock and then forward yourself another six days. This is a bit tedious, I know, but once you get there, you should be able to sell your stock for roughly 110 to 140% gains. Continuing on with the regular storyline, not worrying about any of the other Leicester missions, the next investment opportunity needs a little bit of forward planning. So after Franklin and Trevor complete Eye in the Sky, and that's the one where we steal the car using the police chopper, load up each character with ammo so you can go without cash for a bit, and then buy Vangelico, that's V-A-G. A few missions later, after minor turbulence, and that's where Trevor boards a plane uh, with a plane, and then leaves via four-wheel drive, Vangelico will spike, netting you a profit of between 40 and 50%. Now, I've not tested this, but commenter Toby Does R6 mentioned that they held off selling until after the Polito score, and ended up making a whopping 85% on this sale. Again, I've not tested it, but it's worth a crack if you want. Okay, a few missions later, we have an opportunity to give Trevor a bit of a top-up too. Once you've completed the mission Predator, where you hunt down some of the O'Neill boys using a sniper rifle from a chopper, a new Strangers and Freaks mission will unlock for Franklin, where you do a triathlon against Mary Ann Quinn. After you've completed the triath, immediately swap from Franklin to Trevor and then head to this location near where the end of the race was. Once you're there, you'll see a new random encounter. Rescue the young lady and drop her off, and a little while later, Trevor will receive a $60,000 reward. Our next investment opportunity isn't quite as lucrative, but it's still worth the effort. Once you've completed surveying the score, tool up again, and we'll need to go through three missions this time, then purchase Group Sex, that's G-R-U. Continue the storyline until you complete Fresh Meat, where Franklin rescues Michael from Chang. Wait about 12 to 36 in-game hours for a profit of between 15 and 20%. After that, you can work your way through the regular storyline until you've completed the finale. Once you have completed the finale, and this works regardless of which ending you choose, although we will stick with the canon ending for this. So once you've completed one of the endings, and you've received the Union Depository Funds from Leicester, invest in Auguary Insurance, that's AUG, immediately, whose stock has tanked due to the heist. Wait two to three in-game days, then divest for around 100% in gains. 
Now, remember that fellow at the start of the video I said to avoid like the play? It's time to work his lead. Invest everything you have for all three characters into Tinkle, that's T-N-K, on the Bolsack Exchange. Then grab a fast car, it needs to be a fast car, and head to the pedestrian overpass near the beach to trigger this random encounter. Once you've dropped off our new friend at the airport, head back to your house and then advance time by around 24 hours by sleeping a few times. After that, you should be able to sell for around about 30% profit. Okay, assassinations next, where the real gains start. But before they do, make sure Franklin is geared up with sniper rifle ammo and a suppressor, heavy automatic ammo, and RPG ammo. Prior to the second Lester mission, the multi-target assassination, remembering the hotel assassination was first, sink your funds into Debonair, that's D-E-B. Once the mission's been completed, wait 18 to 24 in-game hours, then sell for around 40 to 50% more than your original purchase price. Once that's complete, wait for Redwood, that's RWC to dip, which typically takes 24 to 36 in-game hours. YOLO all three characters on that, wait another three to four days in-game, and exit at about 300%. The degenerates over at Wall Street Bets would be proud. The third last mission, the Vice Assassination, won't quite net the same gains as the last one, but it all helps. Start by purchasing Fruit, that's F-R-T. Once the mission is complete, sell for 22 to 26% profit, then immediately purchase Facade, or F-A-C. Wait another three to four in-game days and sell. This should bring you around about 32-ish percent gain. Next up is the fourth Lester Assassination mission, the Bus Assassination. This time round, we can jump straight in. No pre investments needed. Once the target's downed, wait for Vapid, that's V-A-P to dip, and purchase as much stock as you can with all three characters. Wait around three to four in-game days and then sell, and this should net you a tidy 95 to 100% profit. And for our final major trade, we're in to Lester's last mission, the Construction Assassination. Prior to starting, purchase Gold Coast Development, or GCD. Once the construction mob boss has been uh, squared away, wait one to two in-game days and exit your position with roughly 43 to 59% profit. And with that, you should have more money than the game can handle. Time to go out and buy, uh, well, everything. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Check out the video up the top for a guide to making money without Lester or the one down the bottom for some more old grumpy gamer goodness. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.